This is the story of the Black Cauldron. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. Legend tells of an evil king, so powerful that no prison could hold him. He was thrown into a pot of molten iron, and from this, a great black cauldron was formed. But even inside the cauldron, his spirit was strong, and his wickedness would not die. Whoever used the cauldron for evil would become all-powerful. With it, he could rule the world or destroy it. On a farm in the country of Pradane, a young boy named Taran slammed down a bowl of mush in front of his pig, Henwen. I'm too old to be a pig keeper. I could be a hero and fight great battles. The wizard Dalbin watched as Taran swung an imaginary sword. But Henwen is a special responsibility, Taran, for she is a magical pig. And now the time has come to try her gift. Dolbin poured water into a bowl, and Henwen touched it with her nose. The wizard stirred the water. Henwen, from you I do beseech knowledge that lies beyond my reach. The water glowed, and a dark vision appeared within its depths. Dolbin frowned. Alas, it is as I feared. The evil horned king has learned about the Black Cauldron, and he wants Henwen powers to help him find it. Dolbin urgently packed food and supplies into a knapsack. Quickly, Taran. Take Henwen to the hidden cottage in the forest and keep her there. The Horned King must not find her. The boy and the pig fled into the woods. Taran picked up a stick and waved it in the air, fighting imaginary foes. I'll protect you, Hen. I'm the greatest warrior in all Pradane. Take that, Horned King. Suddenly he looked around. Henwen was missing. Taran ran through the trees. Henwen, where are you? Just then, something moved behind a bush. Is that you, Hen? I've got something for you. A lovely, juicy apple. A furry little creature leaped from the bushes and grabbed the apple. Oh, great prince. Take poor Gurgi munchings and crunching. Taran threatened him with a stick. Give it back. Gurgi pouted. Poor miserable Gurgi deserves fierce smackings and whackings. Suddenly, Taran heard Henwen. She was in trouble. Griffins, huge, horrible birds, were chasing her. Gurgi jumped back into the bushes in fear, but Taran ran after the terrified pig. This way, Hen. I'll save you. The first Gwythant swooped down and knocked Taran aside. <sighs> the other flew low over Henwen. Its claws opened wide and snatched her up. The Gwythants carried her off to the Horn King's castle. The castle was dark and forbidding. Taran tried to be brave. I must save Henwen, even if it costs me my life. Gurgi, will you come with me? Gurgi shook his head in horror. Oh, no, great lord. Not go in there. Forget the piggy. Gurgi to be your friend. Taran threw down the apple. You're no friend. Here, this is all you want. Gurgi watched sadly as Taran sneaked into the castle. Inside the dimly lit castle, Taran saw a dreadful figure hidden in an evil mask. The Horned King. His henchman, Creeper, was about to hurt Henwen. Taran rushed out of hiding. No! Don't touch her! The Horned King had Taran dragged before him. Boy, make your pig show me where to find the Black Cauldron, or she will die. Taran had no choice. Kneeling over a pan of water, Taran recited the spell. Slowly, the shape of a great cauldron appeared in the water. Suddenly, Taran tripped, splashing the water into the Horn King's glowing eyes. The evil one howled in pain. Taran grabbed Henwen and raced from the hall. The castle guards swarmed after him. Taran ran to the castle wall and pushed Henwen safely into the moat. Swim, Henwen, swim! He started to climb onto the wall. 
creeper grabbed him roughly and dragged him back inside. I caught the pig boy, your majesty. But I'm afraid the pig got away. Deep inside the castle dungeon, Taran moped. Some hero I am. I couldn't even protect a little pig. Suddenly, a stone in the dungeon floor lifted open. A young girl, lit by a floating ball of light, climbed out. I thought I heard someone. I'm Princess Alonwi. Are you a lord or a warrior? Taran was embarrassed. Uh, no. I'm an assistant pig keeper. Oh, I was hoping you could help me escape. Well, come along. Taran gladly followed her down the tunnel. Alonwi peered into a chamber. This is the tomb of the good king who lived here before. A mighty sword glittered on top of the old king's crypt. Taran snatched it up and slipped it through his belt. He doesn't need this sword anymore. Maybe we can use it. Ilanwi was about to protest when someone howled in the next room. Taran gripped his sword and they cautiously peeked in. A scrawny man was tied to a wall. There's been a mistake. I'm not a spy. I'm just Flute of Flam, a singer. As Taran quickly untied him, a guard burst in. <laughs> Taran drew his sword. With a flash of magical energy, it sliced through the air, shattering the guard's weapon. The prisoners dashed upstairs and ran for the drawbridge. Creeper and the guards raced after them. <laughs> We've got you now. Boy. Torrin slashed the drawbridge chain. The gate dropped between them and the guards. They were safely outside. Fluter grinned. Why didn't you tell me you had a magic sword? Suddenly, Gurgi jumped out of the trees and pulled Torrin's sleeve. <laughs> Master! Could you remember? Saw Piggy's tracks! <laughs> they came to a lake. Torrin pointed to some stepping stones. Look, they're Henwen's footprints. As Gurgi started across, the water began to spin. Taran and the others tried to grab him, but the whirlpool swirled faster and faster, pulling them all in. The four companions found themselves underneath the lake, in the land of the fair folk. A tiny winged sprite, King Idaleg, welcomed them. We found your pig, young man. Taran hugged Henwen. Oh, Hen, you're safe. At least for now, the Horned King won't be able to find the Black Cauldron. The tiny king nodded. That's right. The three witches have hidden it in the marshes of Morva. Taran had an idea. What if we get to the Cauldron first and destroy it? Then the Horned King will never be able to use it. King Idleg appointed one of the fair folk to lead them. It's time someone put a stop to the Horned King's destruction. Dolly will take you to the marshes. Before long, they were standing in the witch's deserted cottage, but the cauldron was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, in a puff of flame and smoke, the three witches of Morva appeared. They were fearful looking and full of tricks. Taran drew his sword. We've come for the black cauldron. The witches huddled close together. Did you hear that, sister? Nobody's asked for the cauldron in over 2,000 years. They turned to the intruders. We'll trade the cauldron for the sword. Taran hesitated. With the magic sword, he was a great warrior. Without it, he was only an assistant pig keeper. Taran decided. I offer my dearest possession in exchange for the black cauldron. The sword vanished and the floor began to tremble. Everyone rushed outside as the ground burst open, revealing the evil black cauldron. Taran struck it with a huge stick. Quick! We must destroy it! The witches <laughs> laughed. The black cauldron can never be destroyed, dearies. However, its evil powers can be stopped. It's simple. A living being must climb into it of his own free will. But the poor duckling will never climb out alive. 
Turin was dejected. I failed. Without my sword, I'm nothing. Ilanwe shook her head. No, you are Tarin, and that's enough. Suddenly, the shadows of Gwythens passed over them. Gurgi darted into the bushes. Uh oh, trouble. Goodbye. The others tried to run, but their escape was blocked by the spears of the horned king's henchmen. The guards took their prisoners and the cauldron back to the dark castle. The Horned King stood beside the cauldron, watching his henchmen bring in the skeletons of warriors long dead. The evil power of the Black Cauldron is mine at last. I shall give you life, my soldiers, and you shall obey my every command. He picked up the bones of a dead warrior and placed them in the cauldron. I call on my army to be reborn! Arise, my messengers of doom! Our time has arrived! A burst of flame shook the castle. A thick swirling green mist rose and billowed out over the edge of the cauldron, covering the skeletons. Turin and his friends watched in terror as the horrible, bony figures came to life. They clasped their weapons and marched slowly forth. The Horned King smiled. Never has anyone created an army like this. Go forth, my deathless warriors. Destroy all in your path. Torrin sighed hopelessly. That's it, then. Pradane is doomed. Suddenly, something moved in an alcove above them. It was Gurgi. Master? Gurgi's sorry he always runs away when there's trouble. He will untie everybody. Then we all leave this evil place. Taran crawled onto a ledge directly above the cauldron. No, I can do something right for once. I must stop the Horned King. Gurgi sprang in front of Taran. No, Gurgi not let his friend die. Before Taran could stop him, Gurgi leaped into the cauldron. The cauldron began to shudder, drawing the horrible mist back into itself. The army of skeletons stumbled and collapsed to the ground. The Horned King turned on Taran in a rage. Big boy, you've ruined everything! But the swirling mists caught the wicked king and pulled him into the cauldron. There was a scream, and he was gone. Tarrant, Pylonwi, and Fluter found a boat and escaped to a distant shore as the castle crumbled around them. The witches appeared before Tarrant. We'll take the cauldron back now, Ducky. You can have your sword. It hovered in front of him. Taran pushed it away. What do I need with a sword? Yet I will trade for Gurgi. The cauldron vanished. In its place lay Gurgi. The boy tenderly lifted the lifeless, shaggy creature. Suddenly, Gurgi reached for an apple. Munchings and crunchings. <laughs> Taran laughed with joy. The Horned King is dead. Perdane is saved, and all you care about is food. Come on, let's go home. <laughs>